there's a many ways how you can be effective coach. Uh, I can talk only about the suplex way that I created, you know, but there's a, but I, I bet you there's a lot of similar things between all of us who were, had success in coaching. We had a plan and we knew how to teach our plan to others. Welcome to this week's Escape Your Limits podcast. Our guest today is a world champion Greco-Roman wrestler and renowned and respected coach who was recruited to assist with the US Olympic wrestling program. He's been inducted with the highest honors into the USA National Wrestling Hall of Fame and just last year was appointed as general manager of US Greco-Roman programs for USA Wrestling. His unique approach to training Olympic athletes took him on a journey to create a number of unique products that allowed him to achieve extraordinary results in less time. One of his most successful products was the Bulgarian Bag, and we had the opportunity to sit down with him at the Bulgarian Bag World Championships in Boise, Idaho, to learn his training system and how it's delivering world-class results for both Olympic and everyday athletes. So please join me in welcoming Mr. Ivan Ivanov to this week's Escape Your Limits podcast. Mr. Ivan Ivanov, welcome. Thank you. Or, or you or, or thank you for welcoming me, I should I say. Oh, you're welcome always, <laughs> Matthew. Always. We're here in, in Boise, Idaho. My first time I've ever been here. I'm very impressed. And um, I want to ask you a question just to start. What, what does competition mean to you? Well, it means a lot. I'm a guy who comes from Olympic sport, or Greco-Roman wrestling. Uh, training for me is for competing. Um, now I do fitness just for stay healthy, but competition is, it, it drives people to go and exercise and, and it helps them to set higher goals with their fitness needs, fitness level, uh, it's excitement. Um, it's all positive when we talk about competition. That's why we came to, to this point to structure these um, um, uh, events. Uh, started surplus events with the Bulgarian bag and and we have some other events that are planned for the future with other pieces of equipment but um, definitely competition is is a, a big um, uh, um, task or big for our future development because people are asking for competition they like this and it's our obligation to structure disciplines uh, and events for them to have this opportunity to compete. Right. What's, uh, what's the first event competition that you remember you doing yourself? First event, I'll never forget. First event, um, I got my butt kick in wrestling. I only trained wrestling. I didn't go to any other competitions and I got my butt kicked a few times and it wasn't fun and I quit after a few times. But then later I came back and I won one medal. My story, I make it short, one medal that I didn't beat anybody. <laughs> but they give me a medal. And that medal, I kept it in my office and um, who asked me yesterday, who is your, do you have your medals, you know, somewhere like in the, I said, no, I don't have them. My wife said she's going to put them in a nice, like a frame. But I say, wait a minute, I have the most important medal here. Because they thought my world medal would be in my office. No, I, I, I grabbed one medal that sits right in my office. I could have showed it to you yesterday. And I said, you know what, this is my most, my most valuable medal. And I said my story about this medal that I didn't beat anybody. And either it were three kids or I think they made something like a mistake with the tournament. They give me a bronze medal, but this bronze medal got me so excited. And I continued to, to practice the sport of wrestling. And later I started winning the tournament, tournaments and competitions and nationals and got to the world medal and being an Olympian and finished fifth in Atlanta Olympics. And anyway, now I'm still because of wrestling, I'm still here doing what I'm doing with Suplas. So competition is a, is a big thing and you never know what direction your life will go after that. And, uh, but uh, it's definitely important to compete. What was the highest level that you got to then in, in competition? 
I was world silver medalist in um, 1994 in Tampere, in Greco-Roman racing. And um, about a year and a half later, I, I finished fifth at the Olympic Games in Atlanta. And then after that, it was time to start something new and going in coaching. And um, I was brought here from USA Wrestling in the United States to uh, train, help, with Greco-Roman wrestling program, especially at the high level, at the national level. And I started my coaching journey from, from here. Richie was telling me a story last night about your, I guess, maybe slight disappointment of not getting, well, to, it, it, the way he explained it is there was a, there, when you got your medals, there could have been a slight disappointment of maybe not getting higher, but it, took you in a different direction so what what was that like when you got your when you got to the olympics and you you won your medals like how did how did you feel was it something that you you were satisfied that that's the level you wanted to get to or did you want to get higher and what was the decision to to stop at that point i wasn't satisfied with my results as a wrestler even some people would say well if i wish i have your silver medal and all the other tournaments. I won quite international tournaments and I beat Olympic champions, I beat world champions, but I couldn't beat them on the same day. So when I, when I look at where I was after Atlanta Olympics, I was 29 and I had to be realistic from now on. High competition, young guys are coming. And we had a lot of changes in our system in Bulgaria to where I, I had to think if I really can train at that level and still put the right time and I'll have the support, the, you know, all of, so there's a lot of stuff I had to think to make decision to basically discontinue competing and focus on coaching. But I wanted to compete. Doesn't matter if it was a racing or coaching. And I believe that the biggest, the biggest advantage I got is maybe I didn't win these medals because later I won so much in, as a coach. Because of this drive, I wanted to prove that what I have, with this hard work that I was putting, it will give me someday some results. And it kept me driving, competing. So I was competing in coaching just as much as I was excited at competing in wrestling, actually. I became, I learned a lot from competing or from my mistakes, and I applied this to coaching. And for coaching, I was a lot more calm. I was thinking a lot better. I, uh, obviously, my, with my age, I learned a lot, and I, I, I had a chance to work with some smart coaches around the world, some smart, you know, some, some successful coaches and, and people, advisors. So I had to learn a lot and, and, and continue to compete as a coach. How did you get the offer to come to America and start coaching the, 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 the teams over here? The, there are few people who recognize me and I started to build my relationship back when I was in Bulgaria. I came um, to uh, train in, in Wisconsin with Dennis Hall, who is later became a very successful wrestler, won the world championships um, in, in um, 95 and then later he won a, a, a silver medal at the Olympic Games and it was a bronze medalist as well. Dennis and I built a relationship and, and, and some other coaches like the national coaching staff recognized me and they heard that I can be helpful and um, to Greco-Roman wrestling in America and, and um, that's how uh, the national coach of United States invited me to participate at one of the national camps. And I came as a clinician, instructor, just for a short visit. But after that visit, um, the athletes were asking about me, that I, they were telling good things, that I was effective, I was helpful. And um, that's how um, Steve Frazier started to, he's the, the national coach, former national coach at that time, um, express interest to bring me to America to help Greco. And I came and at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, uh, stayed for about a year and a half. And then um, 
I realized that I had to start working with the grassroots because I already felt like I, I like this job. I like coaching and racing. I feel myself effective. But at the same time, I had I studied the process and said, if I want to have success in this country, I should not start from the highest where working with the Olympic caliber athletes. I should go down to grassroots and study a little kids, what's happening there. And I expect, accepted a, a wrestling program um, at um, just private club in Salt Lake. And I had some great success. I put some kids on the world team, uh, made them multiple national champions in Greco-Roman wrestling. We got Utah to be a second, uh, second um, place as a team at the junior nationals. And, I, and then from there, my coaching journey continued to the other Olympic training center. I came back basically for, to work for USA Wrestling, but at the University of Northern Michigan, which was considered as a training site, Olympic training center, where we were offering education for these students. And that's where really my, my success um, came with uh, world-class athletes. And Olympia, Olympians, we had Olympic bronze medalists, uh, world champions in junior level, university level, senior level. Until uh, 2007, we, I say we as a Greco-Roman team, we won the first world title in the history of United States. And I was proud to be on the coaching staff with Steve Frazier and other colleagues. And um, I contributed with a bronze medal from one of my athletes from our program won bronze medal. And, and we, uh, we, we won the world title. And so that, that was amazing. The wait is over. Our new Escape Fitness catalog has landed. This is the essential guide to all of the latest product innovations that are shaping the future of functional training. Bigger and better than ever, this year's catalog is 190 pages, jam-packed with everything from eye-catching, bespoke functional training frames to some of the latest strength training equipment. So sign up today to receive the digital version today or be one of the lucky few to receive a hardbound printed copy straight to your door. So what are you waiting for? Go to escapefitness.com now. What is one of the memorable journeys that you've had with with your athletes to get you know to, to I suppose get whether it's someone winning a, a, a medal or, or or just getting to a place that you thought was quite difficult do you, do you have any any sort of uh, any stories that particularly stand out many many stories I have um, everywhere I I've been to these three programs that I coached first in Salt Lake I don't count Colorado Springs because I was just assistant coach, training partner. I was not involved fully of the program. So I don't count that first year and a half. I was just, whatever I'm needed. I still help in Greco, but these three programs like Salt Lake City, TAC Racing Club doesn't exist anymore. Uh, then USOEC, the Olympic Training Center in Marquette, Michigan. U.S. Olympic Education Center in Marquette, Michigan. That's the place I mostly um, got all my big um, uh, rewards from wrestling. I mean, that's that's the that's the highest level that I can coach because I was also involved with the USA national team. Some of my athletes made the team, and uh, and then coming back to Suples with creating my own Suples wrestling program and club. Um, I had so many uh, memories, especially with those athletes who follow the process, the training process that I created to have success. Those few who consistently follow, I'm so proud that some of them won national. Those who, those who actually follow, they won, not some of them. They totally, they, they won world medals, national titles, and um, that, that's, the, that's the most uh, mem memorable uh, journey, I can say. So I had great memories in all these three programs that I run so far. What do you, what do you say, what do you think now, reflecting back and being through that journey yourself, what, what do you think, did, did, do you, or do you think that you'd 
got this recipe that providing that you and I and I know I know there's there's always sort of variables, but did, do you think you came up with a recipe that providing you followed these certain things that there's a good chance that if someone had the mindset and genetics, you could make them a, a champion? Definitely. I, I won't call it a recipe, but I understand <laughs> what you're saying. Structure and a plan. Yes, I did have this. Without this, sorry, I cannot perform because I didn't even have a chance to recruit the best athletes. I had to work with whatever I have. Of course, we're trying to recruit the best, but you, we have a huge competition. When I, I'm talking about when, you, when, you, when I recruited for Olympic Training Center, there's many other colleges also pulling kids to wrestle the American collegiate style, which is very, very competitive and has a big history and success. So to pull someone from that dream, they grew up with that to be a college wrestler and, have, and get a scholarship in one of these big programs at the university to pull him and, and, and convince him that he can be good in Greco is a big challenge. And what's, the, what's the difference between, um, like for, for those who don't know, what's the difference between Greco and, and, and regular wrestling? Greco is all upper body. We don't grab legs or below the waist. And we have some specific uh, techniques, like the suplex technique. It comes from Greco. It's all upper body. I mean, it can be used in freestyle too, but we also have another suplex. We call it back suplex. When you, when you lift your partner, just like you're sitting on this dummy, just flip it this way. You lift it, and that person wants to move and save his life because he's going to get launched, and you never know how he's going <laughs> to land. You have to throw him over your chest. That's very specific. Where freestyle, it, it's possible to do, but they can grab your leg and you can't perform that lift. So mostly it's the, the difference between um, grabbing the legs and not be able to grab for Greco, but also American collegiate style have one specific position where you have to, they call it riding on top. So you have to keep the, your partner, your opponent down because if the partner or his opponent escapes, you lose one point as a top wrestler. And it's a mandatory position that we don't have this at the Olympic sport, uh, uh, style Greco-Roman wrestling. So that's the, the, big, the big difference. The, the time frame of the matches, not much different, but it, also for, for um, collegiate style, those who are wrestling in university are three periods by three minutes. It takes a lot of endurance, and Greco changes the rules. International Wrestling Federation changes the rules all the time, but now there are two periods of three minutes. Okay. So, sorry, uh, sorry, going back to your story then. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, we're talking about the, um, the, the journey, or? Well, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, 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 sorry. I, I thought I w I'd clarify the, the difference, but yeah, yes. you, were, you were really explaining about the recipe or the... The, the recipe, exactly. I mean, what I could say my success um, mostly came from being able to structure a program that keeps my athletes on the task, no matter what. And I'm so, I'm so confident to say that what I created, it works, and I will, I will not have maybe results. I always or will perform. Now, I don't say I can make everybody a world champion or a national champion, but I'm going to make a huge progress that they will not deny that. And that's because of my structure. And that's how Suplex was born. I didn't come here in the United States to start thinking to sell dummies and Bulgarian bags and some other equipment that I, I make now. I came here first. How? can I perform better as a coach? And what style of coaching am I going to, 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 to coach my athletes? So for example, maybe those who don't understand wrestling, they, they might not understand what I'm saying, but for example, I identify myself as a throwing guy. I throw body locks, we call it back arch throws, back step, I'm a thrower, okay? So for this, okay, how do you practice throwing? Well, first you have to have partners 
you have to have a good drills when they partner, but you also have to have supportive equipment that is safe because they gotta have to go through a volume of throws. Well, dummy is not enough. You have to throw a life partner. Dummy is, is good for a certain time, but then you have to have a crash pad, right? Because these mats are these mats are actually harder than this turf, you know. So, so I had to create these training tools, like starting with the dummy, for example, because that's the first product they had in Suples. Then the Bulgarian bag, because I, I, I realized that string conditioning part, I could not give it to another string coach. Sorry, they can be watching me, but they don't understand this process. I'm very confident, especially with Greco Roman wrestling. I train very sport specific, very sport specific methods of building strength. And I'll tell you why. They don't know my style. I know my style. I'm a thrower. I have to create exercise for throwing to build explosive power for that particular throw or that particular lift. Greco-Roman wrestling is like, imagine a weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting sport, but for alive people. Do you understand? <laughs> Do you think Olympic champion or world champion weightlifting will lift me? Even they lift three times bigger than me. No chance. I will move, I'll push his lock, and he will be down. I don't care how strong that person is. See how confident I am? For this, we lift, we do some heavy lifting with barbells and and some other tools, but we also lift very specific, uh, very specific program you have to have, and you have to have some products that can help you to build that specific, to be in that position so it balance well. And see, I'm, you're gonna make me get up here and start <laughs> doing some, some, some throws. But so for that reason, I my structure, I had to handle it. I had to handle it. I closed the circuit. The circuit. Does the string coach can work? But I write the plan. He works with me. I don't push him away. Don't understand me wrong. But he works under my plan because at the end of the day, if we fail, it's Ivan's fault, not the string coach that didn't know nothing about wrestling. Do you understand? So that was the difference, and that's what made me successful. Other coaches in college said, this is not my job. This is string coach job. I say, no, this is my job. I don't care. Uh, I don't care getting up in the, uh, early in the morning and run my string conditioning session because I want to be totally in charge with my program. If I'm responsible, I must be here. So that, that's kind of briefly diff the difference, what I was doing compared to, if you go to some other programs right now, you see, oh, they have a string conditioning. And coach does, wrestling coach even don't go and look at what they're doing. I don't do this. Sorry, for me, this doesn't work. You and I have had a number of conversations because you've supported us by training uh, fitness instructors around the world, personal trainers. And I was curious from your perspective as, in, as to what does it mean to be a coach, whether you're a coach training people to, to be win an Olympic medal or a coach to get people fit and healthy. How would you describe based on your experience of being a coach for many, many years, what, what, what that is for you? For me, if I have to go step by step, I have to go this way. Number one, you must love, help people. That's it, first thing. If you don't like helping people, I, I just don't know how you can get better. You can must love to help people, care, because they feel it. Now, if you know how to do this, you also have to understand, you have to have a plan. You can't just go and, uh, today we're going to do a little bit of whatever, wrestling or even in fitness, to make, a, to make the practice like five minutes before. You have to have a plan for this. You have to understand, I mean, it depends what level of coaching, but you have to understand, I'm, I'm talking a little bit more performance, right? Like planning, because you have to follow periodization, where to pick your athletes, for example. And, and you have to know yourself 
what are you good at teaching? And and this is exact. This is how I did it. I, I told you I was, I'm a throwing guy. And I'm lifter down, I train this, and I do gut wrenches, techniques that you probably don't know, but, and I'm pummeling, I'm intensive, I, I train aggressive style, I don't like counter style. But I do have a plan and a system. Without those, um, those things in place, very, very difficult to move forward. I'll give you an example. If you think coaches only go, there's a coaches who show moves and, oh, wow, this is awesome. This is great. But there's also coaches like me to watch and say, well, this will work or this is not my style. You understand? So coaches who show moves, but they cannot crank the kids. Crank. Do you understand crank? Can't when explain you, it. When you, put, when you put the fork on them, when you train them nine workouts per week, and they, they kind of hate you someday, but they never leave you. Why? Because they know you care and they know why they're doing this. They understand that you have a plan and they understand that they're, they're making a huge progress with them. So if the coach doesn't have this, I, I think it will be very, very, very difficult uh, to move forward. And there's uh, many ways how you can be effective coach I can talk only about the suplex way that I created, you know, but there's a, but I, I bet you there's a lot of similar things between all of us who were, had success in coaching. We had a plan and we knew how to teach our plan to others and how to, how to convince these athletes to, to believe us. Again, shower, uh, shower or coach who knows how to train and run the whole the whole process to develop a technician, not just to show one move, but how do you develop this move to master it so you can hit it anytime. Even if everybody knows this move that you're doing it, you still do your move. That's the tricky part of the coaching. And talking and wrestling, no. Talk me through some of the psychology behind your coaching, because one of the things that you know, I've learned from you through the bag is just some of the, the 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 rituals, the disciplines, the lining people up. Like just just share some of those ideas because I think they they definitely contribute to the, how you you know how you get the best out of some of these people. Absolutely, this is very very important. I, I'm glad you remember this. <laughs> I'll tell you something. When I came here first in America. I had to think about this, this process quite a bit. And I use one word, and you probably laugh at this word, control. And nobody likes this word in America. And I was like, I told to my colleague coach, the national coach, I said, Steve, we have to control us. Stop. Don't use this word here in America. Be careful how you use this word. I say, why? Well, control, people don't like this word. Okay. Good. I will call it structure, but I have to, how do, what do I do to structure my workouts this way? So I have full control. Even if I don't say the word control, I have full control. I don't have to say it. So that's how I started first, because you have these young guys listening to you and follow you. You have to start. It's a lot of psychology right here. And I, I'll just be able in this just to give you short examples here, like you remember the lineup. I said, I never s start workout when athletes are sitting down and listening to me and I'm up telling them the plan for the day. They have to line up first. Why line up? To demonstrate that I'm here, the head coach and I'm totally in power? Not at all. I look at many different things. It's, I didn't invent the lineup. The army invented. It's a structure. It's the first, first step of the day that you have a chance to engage with your athletes and, and tell them, I'm here for real. I'm, here, I'm, I'm coming here to work. Line up. Captain, command. Team line up. Attention, whatever. You know, whatever the, 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 the command is. Ten hut. Yes, like army. We're ready here to fight. I mean, I'm here for, I'm, I'm a performance guy. But even with your fitness people, it's the same thing, Matthew. They have to learn structure because end of the day, they want to come and say, wow, 
was a heck of a workout. But they, nobody see that how you, how you got them ready to follow the task. It starts from walking. The day I'm gonna crank them, I walk in. I'm very serious. I ignore every eye contact to ask me uh, excuses. They say, I'm not, I, I was gonna, I had an injury here, but no, I'm not asking him today. This is psychology, don't you think? I'm ready to crank them. I don't need any excuses. Someone comes maybe from the, from the, from the team and say, coach, I have a, I have like injured elbow and, and not feeling good. For example, whatever, it could be ankle, knee. What do you think I say, Matthew? What do you think? What do you think? Just tell me, what do you think I say to this guy? I would this say kid? you probably... A kid or, you know, any level. I coach, you know, remember, I coach to senior level. And what do you think I say? Well, I would, I would say somehow you kind of ignore that and... and uh... How do you ignore? Okay, if you ignore it, what do you tell? No, tell me, just, I want to hear. Um, I want to okay. listen to what you say. Um, what would you say? What would uh, I say? You, a coach, okay, I'm, I'm your, your coach, Ivan, okay. okay. Coach, my knee hurts today, and I know you're gonna ask us to wrestle live. Uh, what, I, I, I just, I think I should sit on the side and, and just watch. I, I think you'd either ask them some questions about whether they actually really wanna do this or not. Tell uh, me, tell me quick, short, okay. and what should I do, coach? Uh, I would say you, you get on the mat and... Um, you tell me to get on the mat? I would tell you to get on the mat, yeah. Or I would ask you how badly do you want to be part of this or not? Because my guess is in wrestling, you're going to... Okay, so you're so direct now. Okay, <laughs> here's what I do strategically, okay? Oh, you know what? Your knee hurts, huh? Let's do the warm-up in 20 minutes. Let's see how you feel. This is the first step, okay? Most of the time, I tell you, 90%, they, come, they don't even come to me. You understand? They're ready. I got them focused. I have another chance to show them how serious. When they get on the warm-up, I said, I'm not going back to this guy to ask, tell him, you know, <laughs> I, I can do this workout. And you do, or sometimes I ask on purpose just to make sure. Coach, I'm fine. I loosen up. If I, do you understand? But first they made their mind to come and tell you about because they just decided not to work out today, but you should not let go that easy. That's the structure, that's psychology. And then the same kid, see, if I were to tell him, if I start yelling at him, you know, sit out or whatever, get out, or you're worse, or, you know, start calling him names, then you push him away from you. You understand it like, but you are actually what I just said, go warm up. And after 20 minutes, let's see how you feel. But I say it's serious. He knows that I don't, I will never let go. And I, I actually, now I work with coaches. I'm a general manager in my club. I'm not a coach. I, I train my own employees. And I tell him, don't let go so easy. He'll be thankful for this in the future. Because some athletes, they have a great talent. But if you don't stay with the fork on their necks to do the, to do the structure, remember, control. Now I can say, it. I, I use the word control. You come to my club, I say it publicly now because it's my club. Because I have results and I don't care now. It's control and structure. Let me explain. Control of the effectiveness of my, my workout. Not control their lives or, or try to accumulate or bully my athletes. Not at all. Full control of my workout, my practice, so I can keep my athletes on the task. It doesn't matter if it's a fitness. That's why many fitness instructors who come to my courses with the Bulgarian back, they fail to be effective with the, with the team workouts because they wasn't listening. They're just showing exercises. They can't structure a workout with the backs. And I show them in the course so many workouts. I show them how to master the exercise. I show them and I show them how to structure a workouts for muscular endurance, for strength, for power, for speed and power. Everything is in the course. What else? What else? But they fail to perform because this psychological they didn't get. And I showed it at the course. I showed it. I stopped them 
I explain, but maybe they got to practice this extra. They have to better organize their workout from the beginning. How do I conduct it? Every time I go to England, everybody comes and hugs me. Awesome work. Why are they listening to me when I'm talking? Why they follow my training? Because I structure it correctly. This is, this is for me, fitness is a piece of cake because you don't have to crack them. You come, you know, come work with grumpy athletes, world class. These big dudes, small dudes, are stuck here like this, and you crank them nine workouts per week, and they don't leave you. They want to cry, but they're still with you, and you get them going when they're so tired and, and beat down because it's, it's a training. It's a, it's, we're going to a world, Olympic world champions. They want to win big titles. That's a challenge. You got to have some skills here how to get into their mind and make them do the impossible. Get them out of their comfort zone, you know. Fitness people come three times a week. Nobody is that. Nobody is injured. They come here. What also, what only you need to do as a coach, organize yourself and structure your workout so well so they follow the task and everybody's happy. How much of it is psychology, both in the fitness side and the performance end, would you say? The fitness side is, uh, is still a psychology. I mean, you still have to use, have to have a structure also. You have to have a strategy, but they, it's not much because if they come three times a week, everybody comes there with desire fresh. It's easy to work with these people. Now, do, do you not think, though, fit, fitness, like athletes, they're kind of, even though I'm sure that it's tough to get into their heads, they've kind of got a bigger goal where fitness people, it's like, oh, I don't even know whether I want to do it. Like, do you, do you think it could be more difficult for regular people to get inside their heads and, and change their habits to want to do it? It's mostly depend on how many times these athletes will be training with you. I'm talking here about group training. I'm talking group. I, I, I consider myself as, a, as a, a group coach expert of group training. Give me a group, up to 20, 30 people, you know. Give me a group and leave me with my bags, with my balls, with my equipment, of course. I don't want to, but I can structure it with other also. I've done it many times. Uh, so for, for, for the fitness people, you only will see challenges if you train them every single day. And they only train one hour. You understand? Wrestlers, two hours, Matthew. This is not normal. This is crazy. This is not good for your body. But we have to perform. Everybody knows it. They accepted this. They have injuries. You, you're giving your health for results. That's it. It's true. <laughs> We're training professional, like we, we train no less than American football. We just get pay less in wrestling. And we get more injuries and everything even than them, you know? So that's a challenge part. When you start training nine workouts per week, that's a challenge. And you better have a plan with this because some, some workouts you have to have a recovery, active recovery, something that gets him back again on the task and get ready to go to crank because other people in other nations don't. They, someone cranks also somewhere, you know? So fitness people, again, it, it's a le very well less challenges unless they have to attend with you a full week of training, you probably will start seeing some people kind of break down. And then where you have to use your skills. If you don't, they either leave you, they quit, or they start hating you because you're just breaking them. That's how I can explain. Hmm. What do you do with athletes, that, the, the, the bad leg situation? I, I, how, you know, we, we talked about our kids and, and sort of having uh, you know, sort of, and you talked about your son trying to, you know, if, if he becomes uncoachable, then it's over. So, you, you know, you, you, you need people to, to want to be coachable. But I guess whether it's kids or your own kids or, or some of the athletes, my guess is they do go up and down and sometimes they're up here and they're, they're into it. And then other times they've got other stuff going on in their life. They're starting to make excuses to get out of it. How, and I'm sure you've seen all of this in your career. How do you deal with people where you see there's some potential but they're just they're just not they've not locked in up here do you say to them look okay if you don't want to do it then that's it you know go or 
is there ways that you've been able to, to flip them around mentally to, to bring them back into it and, and almost sort of, you know, be able to help them shut off some of their other distractions? Coming up next. You have to be able to accept the challenge, otherwise throw or be thrown. Do you come here? If you're not coachable, see you, bye. Loyalty is a big thing here. I don't want to be a motivator. I want to be a partner with you. Whatever happens, I will learn from it. Yes, I had these situations and for this reason, in my Suplex Educational Coaches course structure, I teach my coaches every time we have a new member coming to us, or also with the existing members, I have a meeting. Even I know them, they've been with us. First question we must ask, suplex coach must ask, sit down, meet parents, little kids. They start little with us. Uh, I, I mean, we, we don't talk with the very little kids because they don't know. They come for physical development. We call them recruits. We don't say too much about these goals, but with these kids who have some experience in other clubs, they already, they already have some results and they come to our our wrestling club for a higher performance, then we sit down with parents and say, all right, buddy, what, good to meet you. What is your goal? What do you want to do with wrestling? First question. And let him talk. He said, I want to win this. I want to win that. Okay, good. That's an awesome goal, you know? Like, well, now you have to listen to us. We have to put you in this program in order to achieve, you know, to accomplish these goals. And you have to attend that many workouts. Are you ready for this, buddy? And they, they tell us. Now, if they don't follow, what do we do? We just let it go? No. Or we tell them, we'll kick you out of the club? No, we sit down. So, wait a minute, I thought we had a goal. Yes, coach, but yeah, but you missed all of these workouts. Look, we keep attendance. We show, and parents know. So now, the ball is in his corner. We're always there, it's a club. They pay us for services, right? Now. That's one example. So do, do, do you see? I'll give you another example now with my own son. Okay, because I'm sure some parents will want to listen to what I do with my son, my kids. I ask my kid the same. Okay, tell me what do you want to do with wrestling? Dad, I want to win this and I want to win that. And he goes, talks to my friends, like they're world champions, Olympic champions, said, Ivan. Be very careful what you're saying to my friends because I don't want you just to talk, okay? And he felt really embarrassed a few times because he skipped few workouts and he was like, tell me, what do you want to do? He said, I, wanna, I still want to win, but I still want to go hang out with my friends and we have to go to the football game, I said, or we have to go to a movie tonight or something. I said, well, look, look. You told me you want to win the Nationals, is that right? You still want to win it? Yes. Then you have to listen to me what I say. I'm your coach, right? Yes, he calls me coach. He can't call me dad in the gym, that's, that's a rule. In the car when we drive home, I'm his dad. And, and he was, let me give you another uh, example of what happened with my son this year. He still, he follows a little bit. I go on the trip. He got soft again, because not, dad is not here. He got soft again. And I said, look, you have no chance with me. You either have to go somewhere else, or you have to follow here, because there is no maybe with me. I must have results with you. You know what? If you are some of other dudes, I will say, you will never hear, me, never hear me yelling. When I stop yelling at someone, they know. It's only my coaches know. Done. Finish. I don't say nothing. I don't yell. I don't raise my voice. Finish. Good luck. I'm done. But you are my son. It's my obligation to give you my best. Do you understand? You either have to quit, leave the club, or if you're here, you have to do it because it's my obligation. I would have kicked you off the club immediately after I didn't see you at that practice. Now, do you hear me? This is, how, this is how I talk to my son. You know, he's here and he won the Nationals. Now get them to smell the success, to feel the success of that they can be good with what you're doing. Then it's easy to follow. And that's what I did in my club. I built 
I build a few leaders, give me. I make three leaders, and then everybody else is easy to follow the task. And parents buy into it, because if you don't have the, the parent support, it, it is very difficult. So I get the parents in the meeting with, now my coaches do, or my advanced athletes, I ask the parents to sit down with them, because I see sometimes parents make decisions without talking to us. And they make a wrong decisions. They either going on a trip on their own and, and, and going to some other uh, training camps. And then we cannot stay on our task with their own kids. And then they end up shooting themselves in the, in the leg. We talked about vision. When you bring some of the children on and you start coaching with them, how important is it that they have a clear vision that they want to win a championships? Or can they come on if they're not totally clear, but they want to progress and evolve. And if, if, if they just want to progress and evolve, does that stop you from taking them on? We're a club program. We want to help everybody. As long as we have a clear understanding of their goals, we accept what they want to do. We can't tell them. If it's, again, the program that I pay them salary to come, that's a difference. Then I say, I set the rules, right? But we work with athletes who are mostly at the club, wrestling club kids, but also had some um, Olympic level athletes who are training with me. And um, we had different agreement with them, okay? But these kids, the club level, up to 18 years old, we listen again, what is your goal first? Some wants to work for their physical development. They don't know, they can't, they're not used to dream, like, oh, I want to win the state, until they practice for a few years, and then we, the coaches, should, if they're talented and follow, we should be able to spark the light in them and say, buddy, you can go and win the state. You just put a little bit more time, and you can be really good, you know, and they believe us, they can continue. Then we set goals, but we have a perfect, understanding all the time because we talk to them and they tell us what they need or we at least let them talk and then we once we hear from them we direct them after we work for for a certain time with them and we decide how to talk but mostly for us is the biggest problem I have as a club owner some kids for example they pay the fee and they don't show up. That's I don't understand. And I talk to them and smile, but I don't, I'm not getting upset. I'm not getting frustrated. I just tell them, look, oh, I know coach, I know. And well, tell your mom, you know, well, I had this, always some excuses. Well, why did you buy this package? Why? You know, that's how we talk to them. But for those who really telling me, I want to step and make the world team this year and win Fargo Nationals, which is the biggest wrestling competition on earth by participants. And, it, and it's tough too, a level. We tell them, you gotta show up here nine practices per week. I know we have a good system, good coaching, but sorry, but we're not magicians to coach with remote control if you don't show up. And they understand that. And do, can, you, can you gradually inch people on? So if you get someone that's, that's got a, a general interest and then continue to, to help them set smaller goals to eventually probably go from a, a loose interest in, in the sport to, to having an interest to be a world champion? Or do you think that has to sort of come from a, you know, does that have to come from the start, would you say? Definitely, there are kids that have some more athleticism and ability that fast, you can make a lot faster progress and can get them to the world level. I mean, that's, that's the goal. We've done this before. When they come a little, you know, you don't know their goal. I mean, you see some kids are moving faster, they're more alert, have better coordination, they're quicker, they're stronger, you know. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> After two years, you don't know. They could quit, they change, they start playing other sports and, and too many distractions and they can't, you can't be in the full, the full package of the preparation that we offer. They get the full benefit of our, our training. So 
it, it, it's all it's all depends but for sure if they follow the program especially i'm talking about those who follow full week program maybe give away or give up on other sports just just doing resting and i don't say wrestling just to clarify this when i say resting i don't mean keep the kid every day in the room doing wrestling no we handle from instructions next day live wrestling just like a competition they wrestle two matches extra work like dummy throws and stuff like that extra or do some conditioning with the bags or bands or something for 20 minutes and then they go home next day they come we could have outdoor training sports game for maybe one hour they play american football they play soccer sometime uh, they call it butt ball rugby name it some some games relay games and then we do some extra conditioning work next day they next day come we have another technique so see that and i can keep going on so it's not only wrestling where you can burn them out quickly they get tired of it right plus body needs to recover so it's a whole planning for the purpose of training different areas and i see the system in america most of the clubs don't work this their their facility are not set like my facility to handle the entire training the coaches don't have the knowledge most of them to train strength and conditioning they don't have equipment that you can bring right on the mats and being safe and know exactly how to structure workouts that can benefit your wrestling style you know so i can go on and on but when i when you do this and most of the kids they buy into our program because they see that we're doing everything for them their physical development they want to play football because of the fun in, in the in the schools right because they feel important but some they see all right i believe in the coach he said if i train this year only resting and don't play football i can go way further with my results in resting i tried a few years every time i play football and i come back to the club and start training i'm soft the other kids who didn't play football they kicking my butt and it, it took me a while to catch them and then they know the answer and i have many examples with 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 successful athletes with us but i just i hope i explain the process how how i work in suplice one of the things i think you've got a bit of a talent for is looking at a sport and then identifying specific movements or exercises and then you go on to develop products to be able to train that what was the first product that you did and how did that specifically relate to what how you were training people in wrestling the first product was the the throwing dummy the suplex throwing dummy now i had to categorize it because i have five different models of dummies and i want people to understand what is the purpose what's the difference between the dummy that says power and what's the difference between the dummy says speed and what is the attacker one two three now dummies so um the, that's the first dummy that i developed because like i said earlier in my conversation i'm a throwing guy especially body lock we lock our hands you have to be able to accept the challenge otherwise throw or be thrown don't go in there and lock and stay because the opponent will throw you so we had to have dummy because you had to in order to develop a thrower in greco roman wrestling or any wrestling any wrestling and even in judo in sambo any throwing sport you must do volume of repetitions and you cannot do this with partner sometime when you teach they can do a wrong incorrect throw and they someone can get injured even if you have a crash pad right so i well, the way i can explain it those coaches who really see that throwing will be one of their moves that they teach they have to have throwing dummy now i have the power dummy with which is like twice heavier than the speed dummy the speed dummy came later the difference because i made it to be light and i replace a big part of my warm up going straight into the speed dummies because they're lighter 
and doesn't beat your body at the same time you can use the time that you normally warm up that anybody most of the coaches give the warm up even to the athletes but mistake no way you are the coach you should use every minute when you talk again performance you can do whatever i just want to say what i did but i think they make a mistake and then they say well we 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 don't uh, practice this of course you already give 30 minutes of tumbling exercises where you could have this dummy have him do shots have him do throws teach the back step teach the skills at the same time one minute bridging exercise specific exercises for resting that you need that you still want to do the body weight exercise, but teach skills for 15 minutes. Edit for years. That's why Ivan's kids throwing. They're winning. He's not just because a lucky coach. He has a system. He has, knows how to use his products. So if they're looking at my products, what my advice will be as a coach, check if something can fit into your style that you're teaching, especially those wrestlers, even the jujitsu people. They don't know how to condition, they just do body weight. A lot of people get mentally break, I don't do this, or they, they don't show up. It's a monotony. Think about it, we're not robots. That's the other big thing I did, you know? That's how I got ahead of my other competitor coaches, because they, I see them, they're not doing what I do. I'm totally in charge of everything. Most, you know, control. Remember, not control their lives, control your workout. So I see effectiveness. If something doesn't work, I make changes in the practice. No, I don't. They, they're not on the task. Stop, 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 stop. We're not on the task. What do you guys don't understand? We explain. They see I'm serious. I repeat it again. Once we start doing this and I get the momentum going, then your workouts are fun. I'll give you another example. When you see me sometime on my videos, Sitting above these gladiator walls, the suplex walls on the wooden walls, I sit and I watch the practice and I blow the whistle from there and say, I can tell you now, Ivan's workout, Ivan is rocking right now. He's celebrating. He's celebrating. He's not working. Now every, I see actions and I can coach them with microphone from above because they're on the task. But until I get to that point to stay there, I do a lot of work. <laughs> The Bulgarian bag, how did that come about? It's the same example. I needed a tool to bring right on the mats, to be safe and to be able to keep my athletes on the task. What is the task? To crank them. How do you crank them? Crank them with the specific exercises that are benefit my style. There's many ways how to skin the cat. You know this saying, right? I know how to suplex skin the cat. I know what I want to accomplish with my technical. I know what type of endurance my athletes must have in order to perform the style that I'm coaching them, aggressive style, so they don't guess out. They don't have a, oh, slippery. It's not slippery. Your grip is weak. You don't know how you train that position, you know, pummeling, whatever, you know, explosive legs. This is programming. I can talk about this with my boy. This is a long, long discussion. But just to give people an idea how I'm working, I developed the Bulgarian back to benefit my style of wrestling. Until you guys connected with me and said, we like this for fitness, can you create a program? Sure, let's study these fitness people, I said. And I start traveling around the world working with people who have nothing to do with wrestling, nothing, nothing, including escape team when I came. And I studied you guys and then that's how I created programs that I know they can handle, and I know the other tools or other products don't offer these, especially the rotations, especially the, you know, the full range of motions, decelerate, accelerate, muscular endurance, heart rate, burn a lot of calories. Same time, keep them healthy and minimize the risk of injury. This is what I do. So uh, for me, this is, this is simple. With my equipment, I know how to do this. You tell me what purpose of training you need, and I will make, create exercises, training routines, and I'll give you programming so you can follow. With the bag, what, what were some of the key, um, I suppose, movements or goals that you tried to get out of it? And I'll give you an example of what I mean. Like, so one of the parts that I noticed straight away is like your grip and forearm strength. I noticed there's a lot of kind of thro throwing which simulates 
what you do in, in, in wrestling. So how, when you were thinking about that, like what, what would you say is some of the top things that you wanted the bag to be able to do as it relates specifically to wrestling or, or, or kind of combat sports? Again, I developed the Bulgarian back training program to benefit my style. Um, and what, what? It, it, and my style requires pulling and pushing and explosive actions with the legs, jumps. People say, oh, they buy, they buy Bulgarian backs and, and squat. Don't squat with the Bulgarian back, jump. Get the barbell and squat if it's heavy, correct? But I'll give you 10, 15 variations of jumping to, to, to burn your legs. For so example. that you can shoot. So you can shoot, exactly. Right. You, you want to shoot, you got to jump. And now you have to, you can't only shoot with, you know, by just partner with nothing. You get resistance. It's a versatile. People use vests. Well, come on. It's too complicated. Can you imagine 30 people? I'm a group guy, quote. Can you imagine 30 people? flying vests all over, and then you have a pile of vests and give me all that. It's a wasting time. Get the bags, put it on your back. Plus the weight is it's, uh, it's distributed up on your shoulders. I can grab these side handles. I can create different routines for balance and pushing down and train your lower back. I mean, again, uh, I develop all of these training programs, Matthew, to, to benefit my style. Of the, and, I, and I don't say these coaches who are watching this, See, I don't know what style is. You don't need to know my style. What's your style and how do you see that this back or dummy or whatever I have can benefit your style? Look for those motions, moves, techniques, conditioning, strategy. And if, if you see them in these tools, buy them. If you don't, if you buy backs to squat only, why? <laughs> don't buy this. Go squat with barbells or you know what, what I mean, this is, I, I think, just I give a kind of good example. It's not like you must do exactly, you know, if you want my results, if you like my style, then study my style. And then I give you everything. I give you the books and you follow and with the psychology because that's something I charge more, right? This is different level of coaching. I can show you what I do, but you also have to follow the structure of the psychology, psychological part the structure and control, then, then we, they can have results close to what I have because they follow closely my plan. One of the things I remember you telling me in the early days is that you line up your guys and the goal is you don't put the bag down. And, and you, know, you, you, don't, you don't put the bag on the floor, which, um, and, and you create a number of different exercises, which in itself is quite challenging because you can maybe do a few sets but suddenly your wrist burn out and then you want to put it down but but the the program that you talked about was uh, just just keeping the bag up in the air so talk talk a little bit about that because i guess there's, for me it seemed as though there was also they weren't just doing an exercise there was a big psychological part because you were not only thinking about what you had to do but you was also thinking how am i going to keep this up <laughs> how am i not going to not put it down so talk me through that part yes th this is this is a great question and was I want to explain one of the reasons why I also had a, the Bulgarian back that helped me. The Bulgarian back helped me to create these routines for group training, to be able to challenge my athletes, to challenge my athletes so I can crank them without they even knowing I'm cranking them. How do I explain this? Okay, imagine I line up my team, two arms apart, 20 guys and more, two arms apart, tallest on the back, shortest of front, so I can see everybody with my stopwatch. I don't have assistant coaches. Maybe I do, they're welcome, but they're not too many, one probably, because we're just, we're poor program, right? So I should be in position where I see everybody. Now that's not it. Next to you, Matthew, if you fight with someone, I know you're fighting for the same weight class, or you are a freshman and I have the, you know, the guy in the top guy in my program, I partner you next, just to next. I say, I line you up, you stay here, you stay here. And you spin the back or whatever you do, and he doesn't let go, would you go? If you want to beat him, would you let it go? See, 
I shook the jar, you guys are killing each other. I shook the jar. You see the psychology there? And that's how I cracked them. This is a small little example. So the group training was so important, but not just to have a group training for pleasure like we do in the fitness. It's fun. I never raise my voice. I never have to use too many mental skills here. How did I get these guys on? No, this is fun with foot suplex, but with these guys, you have to, because some of them maybe want to cheat, and you have to be prepared for this. They want to cheat behind you. They, who knows? Some have skills, but they still like, you turn around and you drop the back. You have to be always prepared for this, so no matter what, I need that job to be done. Otherwise, this kid is talented, but if I'm not here, or I don't have a good structure, good luck. On his own, he not, cannot do nothing. And some athletes that I coach, they think they did it on their own. Sorry, but they're wrong. They move somewhere well, and they, they, the other coaches they don't, they, they, they don't know them. They don't, they don't know how to crank them. They don't, they don't structure, they count on their own. Whatever they want, they agree with them. And then they're not performing the same way they were with me. So, I hope I was able to understand a little bit the process, how I work, specifically with these backs. This is one of the benefits, I say. The group training, amazing. What do you see? You've worked with many successful athletes and kids and, 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 and been involved in, in high-level performance yourself. What would you say is one of the biggest differences between the people that get to the top of the game and, 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 and you know, getting, getting to sort of championship level and the people that have the potential to get there but they they just they they never end up following through what what, what, would, what do you say is the, is the difference between those two category of people big difference and i work with both of them and to prove myself that i have the skills to make from both levels that you said good skills not coachable that's how i call it and less skills very coachable, okay? I like to have, well, I like right now at this stage of my life, I like the second category. Less skills, coachable. Because now I, I, I have the opportunity to say, I can work with you only if you're coachable. If you're not, I had enough of you, but I don't. But I had athletes, I moved from the program. I said, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna get him again, and I'm gonna help him to get to the podium, to win, to win, internationally win at the world event. And then I will decide, just, just to prove myself, then I will decide, as soon as I don't like to work, it is not becomes uncoachable, I let go and I never come back. That's it. And I did it, both. Those guys who are listening, watching this, they know exactly who those are because now they pay the price for this. So this is how I work, but I prove to myself with the control and the proper structure here for those who are not coachable. And I had strategy how to, it, it, it takes some time to negotiate a little bit and to have conversations and discussions until you get him back to follow the task. But one day I get tired of it and I said, now, why do I need, why do I need this for, why? And from now on in my club, there's no family politics, done. Drama in my family, out, done. Because Coach Ivan doesn't like it anymore. He has nothing to prove. You either come here, you better come to Suplice, and you should study that program first to see if that's what you want to do or go ask the coaches what we do. And if you don't like it, don't step. Because if you come here, if you're not coachable, see you, bye. So simple. If you're on the other side of that listening and you're like, okay, I want to be, I want to be successful at a particular sport or wrestling or whatever. If we, if we turn that around to give advice to someone, would, would you then say to, if you want to get somewhere yourself and you really, really want it, um, the goal for you, you know, in order, in order to, to be successful, one, you stand a good chance of being successful, even if you may not have the genetic ability, but two, you really need to, you know, you need to find a good coach and basically follow the plan. And if you, 
it, you know, if you, if you have a desire, are open to follow the plan, then you've got as good a chance as anybody to be a world champion, even if someone else has more potential and genetic ability. Is that, is that a fair statement, would you say? Yes, yes. And when we talk about this, um, I also had a great experience to share. And, and I'll share it with one of my, my best wrestlers, is the Olympian, Adam, Adam Wheeler. This guy was a Navy, Navy, um, not Navy SEAL, just, war, just was in the Navy until 21 year old. He came to Michigan to, so he can train only Greco. Hard working man, but mobility was not there and the, the technique, he never had the opportunity to train at that level with, with consistently following the Greco plan for years, right? And was very challenging. I'm looking at Adam and I said, such a great athlete. If you tell him jump, you'll say how, how high. Never complain, nothing, nothing. You know, military discipline, everything. But at the same time, very limited technique. And it just, you have to think how, where do I start with him? And I, I had to study him for a while, and I, and I realized that Adam is very explosive in certain positions, and we should focus on these throwing actions from parterre on the feet. And I developed style that basically he showed me that he wants to wrestle that style. So some coaches, what I see they're doing, where I'm coming from, Bulgaria, actually, first of all, when they see Adam at this, they say, get this guy out of here, send him to carry, uh, be a worker as a docker on the port. He's not for a wrestler. I didn't think this way. I said, I'm not gonna send Adam to work on the port. The guy believes me, I have to find a way to help him to develop, to find his strengths. And I found them and we won a world, a bronze medal. But let me tell you this story as an example, because how I found Adam, one of my best athletes, R.C. Johnson, who was my number, guy, number one guy in that program, we went to a tournament and he wrestled Adam. He beat Adam. He didn't even, I don't think Adam even scored, but, but Adam fought back. And I said, R.C., listen, you, we have to find you a partner. I don't have anybody to train you. Go find yourself, talk to someone. Okay, coach, okay. African-American kid, buff, you know. It's just so a great athlete. He goes there and says, hey, coach, I talked to this Navy guy. He wants to come and check Northern Michigan, our program. Sure, get him, get him, you know, and let's talk to him. And we talked right at the tournament, and he told me that he has duties with the Navy, and he can't make it right away, but he promised me that in, in a few months he gets out, and he, he has a chance to travel. He came to visit. It took me a few days to look at this guy and he said, this is... He's a serious man. He, has, he really is a hard worker. He'll definitely help RC, but who knows? When he came to the program, he joined the program, took me a few months. He said, I like this guy. He started he start coming close to RC. And I said, RC, I bought him one day. I said, look, you know what? We brought Adam to train with you, but I hope you don't become his training partner. And I laughed and I walked away. I was joking. No way, coach. No way. He's cocky, you know, and he's strong and he's still the best. At the world team trials, Adam won, RC lost. I, I, I don't know if they met, but he beat other guy who was bronze medalist, Justin Reese, was a bronze medalist in 2005, 2008. Adam Wheeler beats him and, and, and makes the world team. And now said, RC, what happened? Ah, coach, but Adam, Adam said, coach, I will choose him as the training partner. So he chose RC Johnson and RC Johnson traveled and carried the bags for Adam Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> both guys are great friends. They laugh, you know, I love them both. But this was one example, how I work. And, and without a system and a structure, 
This was very difficult to accomplish results with, with athletes like starting Greco at 21. I mean, come on, you go tell this to European Russians. I don't know, I've never seen anybody like that starting that late. This is too late, you know? And Adam would have continued doing, winning more medals, but we didn't have funds to keep him. The, the police uh, hired him and immediately salary gave them he bought a house and we didn't, couldn't offer this in, in Greco-Roman wrestling in the country. And he had to quit and start family, raise and, and take the job offer, you know. So, um, but uh, very interesting story to, to share. Yeah, I think there's some good lessons in that, really. I, th I think it kind of gives a lot of people some, the way I hear it, it gives, gives a lot of people hope because I think a lot of it's down to attitude. And I, I, my guess is you could apply that to even people in business it's like you know some people could be great but if they're not coachable and they don't really want it you know they're probably not going to be a star player whereas other people they probably don't have it and if you if you hire that that you know, the, the people that want to learn have you know are really committed to it then you you're going to you know have great people in the business as well so i'm, I'm sure there's many areas that, that, that some of those principles apply yes uh, absolutely and when talking about these people, uh, I could say, I could add, uh, sooner or later, when you're not, unco or not coachable or not listening, even those people want to help you, they're going to pull back away. And they're just like, ah, it's, it's, I had enough of this. Especially right now, I'm, I'm at this stage of my career. I just, I just can work with those kids who I, I work. And I, and I don't want to be understood wrong that it's only my way. No, it's not my way. It's our agreement. Do you believe me? Yes. So if I create a plan, would you follow? Yes. So why didn't you show up this week three times? You told me you should show up here. We had agreement, right? And even asked, asked me to sponsor you, but I said, I only sponsor you if you attend all my workouts that you and I agree right here and we're already down. And now you're not following. And you make him to agree with you. He knows that was not my, mm. not my problem, it was his problem. And he knows why I pull out. Sorry, you're not doing what I believe. I don't believe in your plan. I think you should find someone else to do your plan because I, I sorry, I can't, I, can't, I can't get results this way. I only, I know this, I have to put this time and I have to do it this way. So I have to be honest with you. And then you leave with these athletes in good, good you know if they leave they you know that you have nothing to to regret hopefully one day they realize what what what's happened and um <laughs> hopefully <laughs> but who cares after well, yeah. you know i i look i don't want to talk about come here but sit down what do you want to eat you know what order something let's talk about what don't talk anything about wrestling all right <laughs> okay coach okay okay don't tell one word about what what if this was all fast tell me how you're doing you understand? Still friends. They know the deal. Yeah. But you got to do it sometime. You know, like also, I guess you know, for you, you've you've reached a certain level. You've learned a lot. You've put it into practice, and I and I guess you know, you you probably only only you know, I guess you only benefit from probably. There's a lot of people who could do with your help, and I suppose if someone's not interested in doing what you need them to do, then I, I appreciate that you, you can't waste your time with them. And I, I feel the same about that sometimes as well in, in, you know, in business. Um, and, and even with people, it's like, look, if, if you want a goal, you can help and show them how to do it. But if you're, if you're not prepared to do what you know is going to be required, everybody's wasting their time, aren't they? Absolutely. And mostly, most common, you know, like situations, they, they blame always someone else for it's not their fault it's someone else's fault and that that's a big mistake and and the, the interesting thing is um what i've seen from my experience i see athletes who are successful and coachable even maybe not as talented as successful like some others after they retire from wrestling they do well in life and I've seen the other way. Someone who is always with the fork, with someone who was poking him behind for different reasons. The coaches, sometimes they get bonuses, you know, sometimes 
not in America much, but in, in abroad. And, and then coaches are they're chasing these athletes to get to keep them on the task because they can get the bonus. They, they, they that's only their golden egg. And then all of a sudden the athlete has their limits. And then one day he start performing, he start being more uncoachable, or retire. And they go to do something on their own in life, and nobody is now behind to poke them in the butt. They have to create, use their own idea or be, get up and go to work. Otherwise, you're going backwards. And that's what happened with those categories. Talented, but not coachable. The, the mentor come, you know, pulls back. Mentor or coach pulls back. And they're on their own, and they're most likely going backwards again. So. I totally agree. In business, the same, and even employees. Yeah. I like to hire people first. Do you believe, or they come to me? I mean, honestly, I, with my with my little organization, I don't have this problem to hire people. To you have you're running a big organization. You have you have to probably uh, make announcements for that you have an open position and you have to test them. No, I, with me, all the guys that you see here, they all came to me and I like Suples. I believe in you. They don't know nothing until, all right, let's go to school together and grow as we perform in the future. And, and that's how, so I, I, don't, I have, don't have a big problems with that, but uh, if we grow big like you, we, I have to probably like ask a lot of questions or hire someone. How to hire others? Well, I think you know that. I think yeah. I think just applying. We've got a, one of our key partners, um, Advan Advantage Health and Fitness, and he was a wrestling coach. They call him Coach as well, and he only hires wrestlers. And okay, we you know you don't always get it right with people, but he looks for. He looks at it in a similar way to what you do in, in terms of building a team and, and, and the attitude. And, and um, he's got you know, he's got some great people. We got some great people in our company as well. But I think the um, I think what, you know what, all of the things I see in common with what you do, John does, myself, and other people is is just just getting those getting the people with the right type of attitude and and above skills and. CVs and everything like that. It's it's like all of that stuff's great and important, but without the the attitude or the willingness to grow and to be coachable, I, th I think those parts, in most cases, I've seen outweigh some of the some of the technical skills. In in most cases, I totally agree. Yeah, and loyalty is a big thing here, especially with with me. Now I I teach um, a lot of. A lot of information, you know, and, and, and it's, a, it's a lot of education, spending a lot of time with them. Um, Sometimes hard to understand, and I could raise my voice, you know, um, but they know that a hey, coach cares, you know. If I don't raise my voice, if I speak, then I, okay. Very difficult to continue you know this person what this is this is it I just maybe I have to give up but um, we have loyal people and they understand and um, I, it, it's it's a it's a great thing even they make mistakes they come back and they can fix that and without doubt and not even oh it's like spreading every second oh I work one minute more I gotta leave you know no, I don't have these guys. They go and they try to get the job done, even if it takes a little longer time. But I'll do the same for them. So it, I think it's a partner. What I, I like to say for partners, even with my kids. Are we partners? I'm not, I'm not your, um, <clears throat> some athletes call me, oh, well, you're uh, um, just, you're my coach. No, we're partners here in this. I give you this, you have to give me the same. Otherwise, sorry, this is not a fair partnership. I to go all the time to, to um, motivate you. This is, I don't want to be a motivator. I want to be a partner with you. Motivation, you, sh you want these results and you're gonna ask me every day to motivate you so you can start moving? No, you have to be motivated away. I, I have nothing to do with this anymore. 
you're, you're after this medal. You should be more motivated than me, always more than I. This is how I tell them. This is how I talk to them. If we don't, if you don't have this balance, <laughs> sorry, you, yeah. That's an interesting point. I, I had a chat with a lady on a podcast, um, this uh, lady called Sophie, and she's got, she's the CEO of a lot of gyms in England. And we had this conversation about how the fitness industry um, sells itself basically. And it's like, okay, we can help you do this. We can help you lose weight. And, and she had a very interesting comment. She says, look, we can't help you do anything. Um, you're the one who's gonna have to do the work. What we can do is, is support you and guide you and, and, and train you and provide you a facility, but you have to do it, not us. And, and, and the point of the conversation was that in a lot of cases, you know, the industry sells this idea to people that you come to me and I'm going to give you this. And, and she said, that's, that's, that's the wrong, and I, I think I'm kind of explaining her, her intention correctly, but that, that's the wrong thing that you want people to understand. And it reminds me of what you're saying. It's like, look, I'm, I'm not going to do this. You've got, you've got to do this. I'm going to be there. I'm going to provide you with the plan that I've spent my whole career learning and, and I'm going to be supportive and I'm going to care and, and love you and, and do everything I need to do, but you've got to want to do it. And if you don't want to do that, I can't, I can't help you, you know? And, and I think that's an interesting distinction <laughs> in life, really. It's like, you, it's you. And I think lo a lot of people don't like that when you tell them the responsibilities on your, on your own shoulders. You know, there's, there's, there's a team around you, but you've got to carry this yourself. And, and I think that's when, when people recognize that, I think it's sometimes it's a, it's a responsibility that they don't want to take on. Yes, um, I thought a lot about this and um, I see there's a lot of salespeople to sell, to sell it, get them there in their program and then whatever happened. I like to, I work a little different way, or maybe a lot different. I want to be a front. You know why? Because I'm prepared. Before I start this relationship, it could go this way, it could go the other way. I'm fine with everything. I came, I know how to live with two. Now I have 200, I am fine. I can live with 200 a lot easier, right? Then I have two. So all the time, I'm ready for this. All the time, anybody from my employees will leave me. I'm ready for this. Anybody can leave you. I have no control of this. I just keep thinking to be ready to refocus in that situation. That's it. I'm prepared. Whatever happened, what, what's going to happen? I'm not afraid. If, I, if I'm afraid to go and lock with someone, why do I go and lock? I will get thrown if I'm afraid. I'll lock and stay. They're going to throw me. I'm going there. Whatever happens, I will learn from it. This is, this is how I understand you know, this, this whole process. Final question. Yes. Escape Your Limits is about escaping what you've believed is impossible and gone on to make possible. What, what would be a memorable example of escaping your own personal limits? Probably the ability to continue to be creative and to move forward. I had challenges. I had losses. But I don't cry about it and I don't share much about it. I just keep going. Keep going and planting my seeds. You understand? I keep going. What do I do? Well, here they copy the Bulgarian bag. I go there, spend my money on attorneys. Sorry, dudes, I'm not going to do this. But I have other bags I made. Other bags. Different models, different weights, more programming, different equipment that, that supplement the bag, for example. I keep moving forward. I created another liner for the products rather than go chasing those dudes that they're not smart, but they're a lot. What do you do? Just keep moving. Partner with smart people. Forget about this. Keep moving. Keep moving forward. I came up with so many. Can you imagine if I want to go chase these guys around? <laughs> Wasting all my time. I create so many products. I created a brand, soupless. I package everything together like this, and I have 
fun to work in a suplex gym and to coach these people who believe me and they like this what I do. This is what I did. That's my, how do you, uh, you said? Uh, escape your limits. Ha that's how I escaped my limits because I didn't, I didn't plan to go this way. I was thinking, oh, go chase these butterflies or birds around that eating my seed, right? Whatever I planned. No, let them go. You follow your dream. And, and that's now like who I found peace. Found peace. Now I'm armed. Next year I have two more new cool products that nobody knows. They're right now roasting in the oven. This way, this way. Nobody knows, only I know. When I pull the trigger, only when I decide. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, sir. Always great to partner <laughs> with you guys. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you've got any value from it whatsoever, then please do us a favor, like, subscribe, tell somebody, and that will help us to be able to continue to do more of these and help you escape your own personal limits. Thanks for listening.